Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Warner Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. I am so glad that you are here this glorious morning. It says it's 61 degrees, but I think it's warmer than that. Um, sun's right outside this window of the studio, and it is lovely. It's going to be a lovely day. It's going to be, I think they, they told me it was going to be like 87 degrees out. Hopefully winter is over, and so is COVID. Uh, <laughs> again, thank you ever, ever so much for uh, for coming to the uh, program. We appreciate it because, you know, if you aren't listening, if you're not watching, you're probably listening and watching something else. It's not really good for you. It's not good for you. And uh, we want things to be good for you. We want you to to leave every program and go. Well, that was good and. I know something I didn't know before. Remember, know what you know, and um, be able to focus on, on on the good stuff, and that's what's really, really important. Um, sorry, my desk is squeaking because I put it together. <laughs> so of course it's squeaking. Let me get my let me get my coffee. My friend Paul Swanson, you know, uh, doing his uh, news breaks for Speakeasy. Always, you can tell he's always having a cup of coffee, and I'm having mine. As we look for a coffee sponsor, um, yeah, come on now. You want yeah, sit up here. Uh, you want to be a sponsor on this program. You do. All right. Um, a few things today, and uh, we're going to start off with reparations. Um, California Gov Governor Gavin Newsom, in a really transparently um, what's the word? Um, nonsensical, uh, panderish move. Move. While he was fighting for his life in in this recall election, decided that he would put together a panel um, to decide on reparations for all Black Californians. Yes, that's right. Uh, and because the super woke uh, left, uh, the Pan African crowd. Um, then there are a lot of them in California uh, have been talking about reparations. Now, now, does reparations mean that the government will cut all black people a check? I think that's what they want, really. Uh, they cut all black folks a check. And um, and there, are, there have been many problems with implementing this. We're going to talk about um, how, in, an, in, in a lot of ways, uh, California is a petri dish. But it's really a petri dish when we start talking about this. Uh, the president, Joe Biden, he has uh, crib notes for press conferences. Doesn't seem to matter. Now, um, and we can joke, and we can, you know, but this is ser this is serious business. Um, <clears throat> what? I know about words is that words matter, and when you say, and when, especially when certain people say certain words in certain situations, it is super important that those words mean exactly what you intended to, them to mean, and they get to the listener in a way that <clears throat> you intended them to, especially when you're the leader of the free world, especially when you're the leader of the free world. We have, we got a problem in D.C., and, and the problem is, it's in the White House. The left is in complete meltdown, especially on Twitter. Uh, my governor, uh, Ron DeSantis, has signed the parental rights bill. That's the don't say gay bill. You know, it's interesting how they do this, how they take something, they attach a thing to it, and then they rail about that thing that they've attached to it, when it wasn't that that to start with, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, we appreciate you being here, and um, again, this is the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. Uh, the Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Thank you ever so much. Uh, we'll be back right after these messages. All right, again, welcome back. Welcome back to the um, the program. 
Um, the Morning Report, my name is Wendell Lawson. The, 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 again, the Morning Report is for us on fightbackmedia.com, 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 and fightbackmediatv.com. Um, and I need you to go to the website, click on the More tab, and contact, join the family by joining the email account. I mean, the, yeah, I mean our, our email list. Uh, am I going to send you emails from time to time? Yes, uh, yes, yes, I am. Um, do you already get too many emails? Yes, yes, you do. Are you going to get some more? Yes, yes, you are. Um, because um, we are approaching the 500th episode, and um, in order to participate, there is a call in number, but I'm not giving you that call in number. I'm not going to say the call in number while you're listening. I'm not. You're going to have to be part of the family to know the number. Um, it's an inside club. I've said for for months now that the that conservatives have to go underground. And this is one of the things you have to, that we have to do to go, to go underground. Uh, we just can't say we're underground. We have to actually be underground. So, fightbackmedia.com, make, make that happen. And um, you will know all the rest of the details. All right. Um, reparations has been one of those conversations going on in the black community, um, especially in, you know, in black activists. And actually, on both sides of the aisle, I, I talked to some um, people who consider themselves conservatives, black conservatives, and um, definitely Republicans. And um, they have been, I think they have thought that, that maybe uh, having, having a conversation on reparations is a way to, to, to unite the, um, the black community, the black activist community. And to a degree, that has been correct. Uh, I've always been a person to, to not trust the woke left. <sighs> That's just me, though. Uh, so I am. I have always sort of been hands off the the subject of reparations, um, and when and only tell the truth about it uh, with a few people. Uh, my friend Shirley Hozar, uh, uh, Hozar of Urban Game Changers, um, she knows. And you will now know that I'm not a fan for any number of reasons. Uh, you know, I, I think that it would be the death of the civil rights movement um, because at some point, once you get paid, you get paid, right? You're done. We paid you. You got you got a bunch of my money. I don't want to hear about anything anymore. I don't want to hear about racism. I don't want to hear about bigotry. I don't want to hear about housing. I don't want to. I don't hear. I don't hear a damn thing from you. You got you get a check every month. You are being repaired. Now shut up and go sit down. Stop making babies. See, this is this is what's going. See, this was this is what what would happen. Because frankly, I would I, I would be there too. I was like, okay, okay, all right. Slavery sucked. Slavery was terrible. Slavery was evil. Slavery was sinful. It was. Here's your money. Because that's what it, that's what it's all about. It's not about apology. You can't apologize to me for something you didn't do to me, for something that I didn't I didn't experience. And when people are telling me that I somehow have are suffering because this happened in America, and when I tell you I don't I don't think I am, um, because your host, and this and this sounds like bragging when I say it, but it's just, this is just my te just my testimony. Um, I have been able to, in my 61 years, do everything that I had the education and or experience to do. And some things that I didn't even have the education or experience to do, I got to do. I have gotten almost every job I've ever applied for. I I don't, And I don't think that makes me special. I really don't. I, I mean, Maybe I haven't applied for enough jobs. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that makes me special. I'm not at all. Uh, I think there are a lot of people just like me. As a matter of fact, I'm sure of it. I've gotten to work in a lot of fields. Um, I've got a lot, you know, a lot of, of just really across the board experience in a lot of fields. And I've been able to sit behind this microphone in front of this camera uh, a lot in the past 10 or 15 years and have been able to go places and do things that unencumbered and un and not worried about anything really am I blind to the fact that that racism exists no I'm not blind to the fact that racism exists and bigotry exists no 
do, do I think everybody loves me and thinks my butt's a cream puff and wants to bite it? No, I don't. Thank you, Becky Frederick. I love you so much. Um, yeah. I'm not, I, 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 don't, I don't walk around with blinders on. But I don't, I, and I also don't walk around um, think of being colorblind. I don't. I, I think that colorblind is a bad political strategy. Um, but I don't believe that in my life, and most of my life is lived here in the South, that it's been that big a detriment to me. I don't. Now, again, I don't know, and, and, and I don't think that has anything to do with anything except that I've been able to live my life in America. Do I have all the money that I want? No. Do you? No, of course not. Um, do I live in the biggest house in the block? Not at all. Do you? No, of course not. Uh, I just saw that there are people who look like me who are doing really well on any standard. By any standard. They're doing very well. So how is it possible that, that you have a group of people who are doing that well, this many people doing that well, in a nation that is basically racist, that basically um, that was built on on slavery and free labor, and we have people who are, who are descendants of slaves who are doing this well, and you have people who are people who look like me in places like Africa that are doing better when they come here than most of the people, most of the black people who live here. And that's the truth. Um, our friend Matt Vesper covered um, the California situation back when Newsom was fighting for his job amid recall, re recall election. You remember the recall election that conveniently used that time to pander to the woke left and say either that he wanted a more equitable, see this is the BS word they use, equitable equitable um, and inclusive future for all. Those are BS terms. Don't you know say it. They are. Um, by pursuing a plan for reparations. So he's putting together a task force. But the <laughs> now I love this because this task force is full of woke left people, woke left activists. There are no conservatives on this task force. There are no, there probably aren't any white people on this task force. These are all the black, pan-African, woke left on this task force. Through COVID, whatever. Nevertheless, California Reparation Task Force is pressed ahead with its discussions and planning. But they are, they, but they've hit a rough patch as they as they face determining who should receive benefits under the potential reparations law. Now. This has always been the sticking point, and this will always be the sticking point. Because everything is so dynamic. California was not a slave state. California was always a, California was always a free state. Always. The war didn't get that far. The South or the North, the, I mean, the Union or the Confederacy, nobody had airplanes. There were no bombing runs. Okay? The war just didn't get that far. California was always a free state. So if slaves could get, get to California, somehow get all the way to California, then they were home free. It was like free parking on um, a monopoly. Have children. Your children were born free. You were free. Your children were born free. It's always a free state. So this idea that California is apologizing somehow um, to California blacks for slavery, you, you see how this whole argument falls apart immediately? Um, so they're having trouble deciding who gets the benefits. While highlighting the flaws, what was calling, repara what calling for reparations, the situation is leaving members divided. Of course it is. On who should, who should be able to get what? The law that created the task force directed the group to give priority to descendants of African Americans who were enslaved in the United States, but they are now concerned that such a plan would be too exclusionary. I 
America, uh, African descendants of slaves. Eddie West. That is a large group, it's a, it's a very large contingent uh, in California and around the country in the, in the black activist movement. ADO, ADOS, you probably had heard, heard about that. Because reparations is supposed to be a reparation for slavery. But this is not, you know, again, the left always expands the giveaways. Always, always, always. This is what they do. This is why when I said earlier, I don't trust them. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. And this was exactly why. And I think a lot of a lot of people that I know who were who who were in who are in the ADOS movement got into this believing that this should just be an ADOS. However, some argue that all Black Californians, including immigrants from Africa, who are coming here and doing very well, or descendants of slaves from other countries. Descendants of slaves from other countries ought to be eligible um, due to what they to what they point as systemic racism. But such ideas have angered those who say that the plan would you that would leave U.S. descendants of slaves in U.S. with mere pen, with, with mere pennies. And you wonder why I didn't get into this discussion. This is why I didn't get into this discussion. This is ridiculous because it was going to devolve into this. You know, the thing that comes to mind now is why did it take so long for the Affordable Care Act to pass Congress back in 2009 and 2009? It wasn't because Republicans had stopped them. It's because the left was trying to divide up the spoils. So these people are arguing over money that's not theirs. They're arguing over money that's yours and who should get it. And some people say that anybody from any country who was a slave due to systemic racism and uh, European um, domination around the world, is what they're saying, should get some, some of your California money. Now, you know that doesn't make any damn sense, right? Predictably, the group, the group of woke, the woke social, excuse me, the group of woke social justice conscious individuals who make up the task force are making such decisions that will be sure to anger anyone deemed ineligible. But the task force is set to vote on who should receive reparations as soon as today. After previously delaying the decision on eligibility, things are heating up. Some members want to limit financial and other compensation of descendants of enslaved people who, while others say that all black people in the U.S., regardless of lineage, suffer from systemic racism in housing, education, and unemployment. And, 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 and employment. This, is, this is the crux of, of it. Reparation should be for those people who were descendants of slaves. Oh, no, no, no. Everybody. Why are they saying this? Because these are people who want to, quote, represent the community, and they get power in representing the entire community. Look what I brought you. Look what, we're, look what I'm doing. That's what this is about. And frankly, this is what this has always been about, which is why I, I say hands off. On the committee, it's not even a year into the two-year process, and there's no compensation plan for any of any kind on the table. But there's broad agreement among advocates that a need for multifaceted remedies yet uh, for related yet separate harms, such as slavery, Jim Crow laws, mass incarcerations, redevelopment that results in Dirty looks in elevators. They want everything. Kitchy Tofta, director of reparations, uh, the, the Reparations Education Project, is among the longtime advocates who are thrilled the discussion has gone mainstream. Mainstream? What? Not mainstream. But she's baffled by the idea of limiting reparations to people who can show lineage of ancestry. It's not easy to document, and slave owners frequently move people among plantations in the U.S. and Caribbean and South America. Yes, that's why this is difficult, and that's why it's taken too long. And what these people should use their energy to do is to educate and encourage 
and build with the resources they have now. On the infighting and debate continues over who deserves reparations, it's clear California South Force is no rush to file on the plan. No, because they get more attention with their with a mess, with a drama. According to the law creating the task for the deadline for proposal of the group is due in July 2023, which at that point will be uh, for the state legislature to consider turning these recommendations into law. And it's California, and they will find a way to do so. Get out while you can. Get out while you can. Just saying. All right, we're going to take another little break. We'll be back. Um, more of the Morning Report. My name is Willie Lawson. The Morning Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Uh, we'll be back right after these. All right, welcome back. Welcome back to the Morning Report. We appreciate you being here. Um, you know, <sighs> the woke left. We love the woke left because woke left is about uh, about peace and it's about love and it's about uh, it's about harmony and it's about bringing people together. It's about equity and inclusion and it's about hate and meanness and sin and awfulness. Jonathan Perkins, director of the Race and Equity at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, um, tweeted his wish for Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence Thomas to die. After the news broke that Thomas was hospitalized for an infection. He says this whole rule that we're not uh, to wish ill on people is silly. This whole rule that we're not to wish ill on people is silly. Hmm. Perkins added, Un Uncle Thomas is what he calls him, is a sexist token who committed himself to making us all share in uh, all share in he and his treasonous wife's misery. Uh, I'm over it. He is he is bad. He has literally endangered the lives of countless in this country's vulnerable populations. Again, the left takes these things, anything puts their wrap around it, and then rails against the wrap that they put around it. We're back to January 6th. What did I say in one of my previous videos? People acting and responding irresponsibly. Now we're all dealing with it. Perkins further said that he not believed Thomas was actually sick. Y'all think he's just just so happens that to secretly be admitted to hospital for an unidentified ailment the exact day that the January 6th committee released, quote, leaked information implicating him and his wife. Perkins doubled down on wishing uh, for Thomas to die. Thomas can choke as far as I'm concerned. He hurts the people I love before offering a non-apology apology. This is all on Twitter, but all these tweets have been taken down. Uh, Anna, Anna Spain Bradley Vice Chancellor of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion for UCLA said in a statement to Town Hall, this tweet does not reflect my or UCLA's EDI's views. Except that it does. This is the meanness, the, 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 the anger, the meanness of the left. It's not, about, it's not about love, it's not about equity, it's not about inclusion, because inclusion means not just what people look like, it's what they it's what they think like too. You want to bring all that in, right? If diversity makes us stronger, diversity of thought makes us stronger. Uh, it doesn't matter if everybody looks the same and, and and thinks the same. It looks different and thinks the same. That's the same. You are stronger when you bring a group of people together that may not look the same or may look the same, but they think differently. So the ideas come. And that's when you get innovation. So these people with this whole equity and inclusionary BS, it's just BS. Just they're just children. All right. Um, our president is struggling. I think it's okay to say, even here on YouTube, that our president is struggling. Struggling. Uh, despite having his answers pre-written. Um, 
President Biden's press conference still went off the rails. It still went off the rails. So it's no secret at this point President Biden isn't uh, great at facing reporters, nor is it a secret that his staff does everything they can to try to limit their boss's exposure to questions. Normally, White House reporters only get Biden's back as he walks out of the, uh, out of the room following uh, remarks without responding to shouted questions. But every now and then, he decides to face the music. Whenever he does, things seem to go off the rails. No matter how hard his staff, or whoever is running the show, may try to avoid it. Um, there is a picture, and it's going to be on the fightbackmedia.com website. Um, a staff Monday, uh, at Monday's event at the White House, where the President Biden had made remarks on his budget in that fiscal year, we have a better idea of how the White House prepares questions for, for the President. Preparation that, that again, was all for naught because Biden failed to stick to his one sentence talking point as he cl that he clutched in his hand. He has this little, little, I don't know, it's like the back of a, of a 3 by 5 card that says, tough Putin question and answer talking points. Just say this. No matter what, say this. The question is, if you weren't, weren't advocating for regime change, remember that question about regime change? What did you mean? Can you clarify? Yes. I was expressing the moral outrage I felt towards, for the actions of this man. I was not articulating, uh, I was not articulating a change in policy. You have two things to say. Just say those. Couldn't do it. Yes, yeah, he got a cheat sheet. Much like the one the staff has given him in the past with a list of reporters um, he's supposed to call on. With, with, with what he was supposed to say in response. I told y'all when um, Joe Biden became President of the United States that everything that you would see would be for public consumption. I told y'all that. I told you everything that you would see would be for public consumption. And still, it went off the rails. So despite their, the best efforts of whoever had the undesirable job of trying to keep him on track, the predictable question was asked, uh, and Joe Biden still went off the rails and doubled down on his statement in Warsaw. He managed to read his cheat sheet, but he wasn't, but he wasn't taking or walking anything back. Because he said, um, that any that, that any walking back it didn't happen it didn't happen we're trying to guys gaslight people it, it didn't happen Biden's inability to stay on message or avoid string and the rambling incoherence is is less newsworthy he's began doing it since he was vice president under Barack Obama but in fact the president needs a cheat sheet the fact that he needs a cheat sheet to remember an eight word statement is a little concerning don't you think especially when the need, when the needed help is on a pretty much critical issue, and not on some just weird, obscure talking point. This is not just some some off the rail weird stuff. No, it's just, this is this is this is the stuff. This is the middle. This is the stuff. The rest of Biden, a supposedly tough Q and A with reporters on Monday, was more of the same mess as Biden oscillated between scowling at reporters and grinning in the middle of their questions, and continued to deny the reality of what he had said while in Europe, and contradicted what the administration had stated as a policy. Well, and you're saying, well, what was one of those? Um, when talking to the military, he was talking to some military folks um, for a couple of hours, he basically, he, he told, told them that they would see firsthand um, how the Ukrainian people were fighting back. They would see that when they went there. Firsthand. I mean, he denied saying that. That's not, that's not what he was talking about. Okay, so what were you talking about? Then what were you talking about, Mr. President? If you're the, if you're the leader of the free world, it, it matters what you say and it matters how you say it. If there is danger in having Joe Biden be in that office, 
This is the danger. This is the danger. Truly more dangerous than the left um, left reaction about my governor, um, Governor Ron DeSantis of, of, of Florida. Because they are in complete meltdown mode. The left, the loony left is in complete meltdown mode over the Governor DeSantis signing the parental rights bill. I won't say, you know, they have, I can remember I've been saying, I've been saying the entire program how the left wraps something in the packaging that they don't like and then rails against that packaging. So when you actually open it, it's not what they've been saying at all. That's not what that is. Florida uh, Governor Ron DeSantis officially signed H. Bill 1557, known as the Parental Rights in Education Bill, on Monday, uh, causing um, the left and progressives to lose their day and mind on social media. Much of the outrage stemmed from the bills erroneously being called the Don't Say Gay Bill. See, they wrapped it up in this thing, leading people to believe the word gay can't be used in classrooms. And that's exactly why they did it, but that's not the bill at all. If you want to read the bill, if you want to know what the thing is really about, and if you want to, if you have family, if you have uh, co-workers and, or whomever, send them, send them to fightbackmedia.com, have them scroll down to the bottom of the page, and the seven, and seven page, the seven page bill is right there. The only the, 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 the crux of the issue is this. The governor and the state of Florida and parents don't want teachers talking to their kindergarten, first, second, and third graders about sexual orientation.